I'm not all that handy as a mechanic, so I'm not going to be doing this myself, but there might be somebody out there who's, you know, what we refer to as a shade tree mechanic kind of thing. I mean, who do you, who do you, if I called you up and said, uh, I'm going to replace this as a, as a consumer, would you sell it to me or do you prefer to go obviously through an established dealer? Well, Dorman won't sell to directly to an end user. Um, we distribute through traditional channels as well as large okay. retail channels. Okay. So you would purchase this battery from any of the large retailers across the country or traditional market um, warehouses or WDs. Um, we, have, we have really put a lot of effort into trying to educate and uh, provide information to people so that they can feel comfortable enough to, to replace their batteries. Um, I, would, I would encourage everyone to check a website we've developed specifically right. for this. It's www.dormanhybrid.com. Um, it has full feature install for every battery. So it isn't like this is installing a battery on a Honda Civic. You should be able to figure out a Prius. Right. It's literally, this is a Gen 1 Toyota Prius. This is yeah. what you have to disassemble and put in um, on a Gen 2 Prius as well as a Honda Civic. Um, and every time we release a new battery, uh, we will be having an associated video and instructions. And obviously there are a lot of cautions we want people to follow and those are all listed yeah. well on that website yeah. also. You touch the wrong things on one of those batteries and you have a bad hair day. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, could, it definitely something you'll think about. Well look, what kind of durability testing have you done on these batteries? Well, we've, we, we actually have a fleet of vehicles that we do on-vehicle testing for. Um, with everything that Dorman sells, one of the most important parts right before we release the part um, is the actual on-vehicle testing. So we'll actually take one of these batteries after we release it. For example, we're working on the Camry one right now. And we will actually have that battery monitored and run on a vehicle in the real world, going, driving every single day for a commute, pulling a couple of adults in the car, everything that we can while data logging the entire current profile of that battery. So not only what's going in and out of the pack, but also what's going in and out of each one of those modules to be able to determine if they're characterizing properly, if their profile is changing at all, if there's any kind of temperature differential across the pack, which would be an indicator that there's something internal to one of the modules, one of the cells in the modules that could potentially be having a problem. So that, that's how we're able to basically characterize and compare our battery to what would have been obtained when the vehicle was new. Yeah. What Typically, what sort of the... Um Disc, I get, for one of a, a better term here, discard rate. If you've got, and I can't remember exactly, there's something like 28 cells or modules in that pack. It's something in that area, I think. Um, so, if, so as you go through and you look at those, do you find that 10% of them you have to, you can't reuse? They've got to be recycled. Or is, you know, any sense of what that number is? It could, can all of them be restored and, and put back into useful service? I, I would be a little hesitant to giving you a number only because I feel like our sample right now is very skewed. Okay. A lot of the cores that we've rebuilt to launch this line came out of salvage, okay. came out of perfectly good vehicles. So if I turn to you and said that our scrap factor is you know, 30%, 20%, I don't, I don't necessarily know if going forward, right. as we start getting actual failures, because a battery is not a diagnostic tool for a replacement. If a customer buys a battery, they're keeping the battery, and more than likely they needed a battery. Right. Um, so it's it, it's literally so new of a market and so new of a technology. There isn't even a book or a competitor I could ask. I mean, we're we're leading right. the edge, and we're yeah. we're kind of we're kind of uh, uh, doing it as we go. But there are things that we do to try to mitigate that to try to keep our scrap as much, as low as possible. Things like we engineered the Dorman bus bar. So this actual bus bar that, um, that comes on the battery is highly susceptible to corrosion. It's basically exposed to cabin air, which if in the winter time you have wet feet, it rained, it snowed. Right. You've got moist damp air running against the metal yeah. that has high, high electricity, high voltage electricity running through it. You have oxidation. So by doing things like this, we're able to decrease the amount of shrink that we have on the battery as a pack because we've actually gone through and engineered certain features for the battery like the nickel plated bus bars to keep that corrosion from happening so that we can try to turn out as much as we can and continue to fill those orders. Okay, good. Um, what was the other? I was, as you were talking, there was another thing that came to mind. I'll think of it in, uh, in just a minute here. So at what point then should consumers...
consider, you know, how many miles or, or at what point do they need to sort of the alarm bell start going off as they're driving their car, their, their Gen 1 Prius, um, and says, you need to look at replacing a packer. Does that uh, happen when they go into the dealer? It's a very, very good question. So these are managed batteries. So unlike a uh, standard, I used the example of the flashlight or the nickel cadmium batteries back in the time, that we were unmanaged, basically, D cells. This battery is managed by an ECU. So it's actually constantly monitoring and evaluating the battery for its capacity and its efficiency. And what ends up happening, by the time the customer actually gets the warning light on the dash and their hybrid system is disabled, that's because the battery, if it's in the event of a bad battery versus a stator or an inverter or, 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 or many other parts that are part of the hybrid system, but if failure was in the battery, it's because the battery ECU has, has ascertained that it is no longer safe or it can no longer safely charge and discharge this battery within the specs that it was designed for. Right. And when that can happen is really contingent. I would hate to turn around and tell you, oh, at 100,000 miles, you should really get the car scanned and see if there are any codes. Um, one of the indicators will definitely be gas mileage. I mean, you can use that as a loose barometer. I would not, oh, I've got bad gas mileage. Well, there are a lot of things that can make yeah. a car get bad gas mileage. My wife can drive with 10 PSI of air in the tires, and she lost three, three miles a gallon on that. Right. Um, but there are certain indicators. I think that as, um, as Dorman enables the aftermarket to service these vehicles more often, People will develop the expertise of being able to kind of put together a myriad of symptoms and be able to say, look, this combination is typically associated with a weakening battery. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that is a competency that will be developed um, in, the, in the aftermarket automotive in, in training for technicians as well as knowledge for vehicle owners through things like our website. Right. I, though I remember the question I was going to ask you is, so what happens to the original battery pack. Let's say I come in there with my uh, 2004 Prius um, and they drop one of your new, your uh, rebuilt, not new, I don't want to call them rebuilt, or but you know what I mean. Manufactured. Yeah, uh, remanufactured, one of your remanufactured uh, packs in. What happens to that old pack then? Is that then uh, turned over? Do I get sort of a, a discounted price for giving you my pack? I mean, how does that work? Great question. So this is a remanufactured product, so there is actually a core charge on it. So when you go to the parts store and you purchase this battery, there's the principal price of the actual battery, and then there's actually a deposit for you bringing back your old one. So that has to be paid unless you have the old one with you, which is unlikely. Right. And you get a full refund for that core if you bring us back a rebuildable unit, which basically means don't bring us a box with rocks in it, or don't bring us a, a that was out of Katrina or has been in a car fire. Right. But shy of that, you know, the, 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 the packaging is reusable. So the old unit or, or the replaced unit would go into that same packaging and be returned to your parts store. You'd receive your deposit back and then that unit would come back to our facility for remanufacturing and evaluation. Um, what's really important and I wanted to, to be able to share is with, with your viewers is we, we're very responsible with how we deal with these batteries. They are nickel metal hydride batteries. That's the main chemistry of the batteries that we're selling right now. And there are situations where these modules are not going to be rebuildable. So basically, there, there's going to be a module that either has a complete dead short, it's dead headed, or it has a very, very high resistance. And we're not able through our process to put it back into a condition where it's viable for a vehicle to use it. We, we deal directly with um, professional authorized uh, re recyclers. Okay. that will actually safely handle these batteries and recycle them for the nickel, which is a precious metal. So it can actually be used for other products, maybe more batteries, maybe new door handles. Um, yeah. but, but everything gets recycled and reused to make sure that, you know, we have the smallest footprint as possible on the environment. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. Speaking of, of, of the different chemistries, any thoughts at some point then of instead of using nickel metal hydride in there that uh, you offer a, a replacement pack that is uh, lithium based, for example, or nickel zinc or something like yeah. that? There's, there's a lot of press and chatter about it online. Um, and there, there's a large community online for hybrid owners. 
And lithium metal ion is, is as well, any lithium uh, technology, really even zinc air technology, uh, has a great value proposition because you really, you really have a lot more power for density. So these batteries are a lot lighter, they're a lot more efficient, and they carry a lot more power than nickel metal hydride. Um, we've definitely been looking at it. We don't have anything formally in the books. Right now we're really just trying to, as quickly as we can, provide an alternative to, to, the, uh, to the factory replacement batteries. But I would not be surprised, and it sure is a pet project of mine that I would love to work on, yeah. uh, um, is, is being able to offer customers of a nickel metal or a, a nickel metal hydride with a lithium or a newer technology that's lighter, more efficient, and more, most importantly, has more energy in it, which yeah. ultimately will lead to better gas mileage and, and, and longevity. Right. Very good. Okay. So one more time, tell us where people can learn more about, uh, about this. Absolutely. It's www.dormanhybrid.com. And please keep feedback coming to us. You know, Dorman is always looking for new products to come out with, and especially on hybrids. Um, we have various links on that website to be able to submit new ideas or comments. Um, we welcome them. We, we try to really reach out and talk to as many people as we can so that we're, we're bringing what people need. Okay, very good. And uh, at some point, let's talk about the battery pack in my Prius, but that's at Sounds another great. time. <laughs> Sounds great. Great. Dimitri, thank you so much. And Rob, who's back in the background there, thank you for arranging this. Sure, no problem. Thank okay. you very much for having us. All right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.